Hawaii, Tani ha gita, uisha she, anika juti, wita tikadi nika shika akia ba pinon ba kisto pete, oku wita josha pei nika shika to wa akia ba ibi ni shika nika shika, mi nika shika ni washa ke oku ta away. I have an Indian prayer that I want to bring to you. I have a letter here from Thomas Jefferson to John Lynch, 21st of January, 1811. And this letter is going to be the backdrop of why everyone is doing DNA and their bloodline is showing up in Africa, or at least West Africa. And so this letter kind of explains why you have genetic markers in Africa based on people from the Americas being taken to West Africa to clear the land of the indigenous people in the Americas. And they, in, in the past, have told you a false history saying that uh, the people came from West Africa to the Americas when the coast of the West African was colonized by the British and the, and the uh, Spaniards and the French. Sierra Leone with the Spaniards and the uh, uh, the American Colonization Society uh, created Liberia. So, let me get into this letter here to give you some insight of why your genetic markers are matching with some of the indigenous people from the Americas living now in West Africa. Uh, it says, uh, Sir, you have asked my opinion on the proposition of Miss Muffin to take measures to for procuring on the coast of Africa an establishment to which the people of color of these states might from time to time be, co be colonized under the, the auspice of different governments. Having long ago made up my mind on this subject, I have no hesitation in saying that I have ever thought it the most desirable measure which could be adopted for gradually drawing off this part of our population most advantageously for themselves as well as for us. Going from a country possessing all the useful arts, talking about the Americas, they might be the means of transplanting them among the inhabitants of Africa and would thus carry back to the country of their origin, which is an assumption because they saw brown-skinned people here and they assumed that all brown-skinned people are the same. The origin disease of civilization, which might render their sojournment and suffering here a blessing in the end to that country. So they wanna send your people from here to Africa and they assume that you are, that you came from Africa since they met you here and said, well, these people look like the people close to our country over there in England, uh, Africa. So they must be from over there because we just left from that part of the world and we used to seeing those kind of people uh, over there. So they look identical. So let's just send them over there and get rid of them so we can free the land. So he said, I received in the first year of my coming and to the administration of the general government, a letter from the governor of Virginia, Colonel Monroe. That's where um, Monrovia, Monrovia uh, and Liberia was created by them. Consulting me at the request of the legislature of the state on the means of procuring some such uh, asylum, asylum to which these people might be occasion, occasionally sent. I proposed to him the establishment of Sierra Leone, to which a private company in England had already colonized a number of Negroes, and particularly the fugitives from these states during the Revolutionary War. And at the same time suggested, if, if this could be, if this could not be obtained, some of the Portuguese possessions in South America as next most desirable. Third, the subsequent legislation approving these ideas. I wrote 
the assuring year 1802 to Mr. King, our minister in London, to endeavor to, ne to ne negotiate with the Sierra Leone Company a reception of such uh, for these people as might be colonized hitter. He opened a correspondence with Mr. Weber, Weberbond uh, and, Mr. and Mr. Thornton of the company on the subject in the, and in 1803. I received, though, Mr. King, the result, which was that the colony was going on, but in a languishing condition, that the funds of the company were likely to fail as they received no return for profit to keep them up, that they were therefore then entreated with their government to take the establishment off of their hands, but in that, in no event should they be willing to receive more of these people from the United States as it was excellently exactly that portion of their seller, sellers which had gone from hence, which by their idleness and turbulence had kept the settlement in constant danger of dissolution, which could not be, which could not have been prevented, but for the aid of the, the maroon Negroes from the West Indies who were more industrious and orderly than the others and supportedly and supposed and supported the authority of the government and its laws. I think I learned afterwards that the British government had taken the colony into its own hands and I believe it still exists. The efforts which I made with Portugal to obtain an establishment for them within the, their claims and South America proved uh, also abortive. So let me see what else we got here. Uh, you inquire further whether I would use my endeavors to procure uh, for such an establishment security against, against violence from other powers and particularly from France. Certainly, I shall be willing to do anything I can to give its efforts and safety, its effects and safety. But I am but a private in individual and could only use endeavors with private individuals. Whereas the national government can address themselves uh, at once to those from Euro of Europe to obtain the desired security and will unquestionably be ready to exert its influence with those nations for an object so benevolent in itself and so important to the great portion of its constitution. Indeed, nothing is more to be wished than that the U.S. would themselves undertake to, such, to make such an establishment on the coast of Africa exclusive of motives and of humanity, the commercial advantages to be derived from it may repay all its expenses. But for this, the national minds is not yet prepared. It may perhaps be doubted whether many of these people would voluntarily consent to such an exchange of situation and very certain that few of those advantages advantage to a certain age in habits of slavery would be capable of self-government. This should not, however, discourage the experiment nor the early trials of it, and the proposition should be made with all the prudent cautions and attentions requisite to reconcile it to the interests and safety and the prejudices of all parties. So they making plans, or have made plans to send you from here to Sierra Leone and West Africa, which they did. Some of the people went willingly, 
uh, to get rid of the people, the indigenous people of this land. Now here we are years later and they telling you that you are from Africa when they had already had plans long before you were born that your people would be sent to that coast over there and then they matching your markers with people that were sent over there. Uh, but, but they cannot give you names of families who your DNA matches with. But when you do your DNA in this country, they can give you names, phone numbers of people that may be related to you in this country and say, you have a, a genetic match with someone in California and you live out in New Jersey. So you can look those people up and call them and say, hey, I got a genetic match with you. Uh, we must be related. But they have yet to match an African person with an American person because they can't do that. They only can do it with living people. So for you people who are trying to say that DNA doesn't lie, no, it doesn't lie when you match living people with living people. But if your great grandparents are in the ground, the only way for them to tell that those people are related to you is to assume those bodies and match the DNA that you have in your body with the DNA that's in those bones that's in that ground. So don't be hoodwinked and think that uh, DNA is foolproof because DNA, the way that they are using it, is is a lie. That's basic point blank. It is a lie that they're making up these genetic markers. You got Henry Louis Gates that's promoting this, knowing that it's a lie, and then you have other people who's who skirt around the truth, and they trying to hint to that there was dark skinned and indigenous people of Negro descent in this country, but they won't flat out come out and tell you because it's not popular right now. So you have to be aware of what's going on and how they are trying to maneuver these things and trick you just like they're doing with the, uh, going back in the 1700s uh, books that they putting online now and they inserting the word African-American when they know in 1700 there was no such thing as African-American that was created in 1988 by Jesse Jackson. So uh, keep your eyes open for these for such you know hints like this that's telling you that they uh, was colonizing the, the coast of West Africa and sending people from this country to that land over there to get rid of them. Uh, and now here you are, an indigenous person going under the uh, assumed name of African American when you are Aboriginals to this land. You know, Aborigines, you are the first people. The Asian wave came through and started pushing you to the east coast of this country, the south and east coast. That's why for thousands of years, they were living in teepees, traveling from one area of the land to another area of the land, whereas the indigenous people stayed put in one location. They had structures, they had buildings, they had houses, they, had, they were farmers. You know, everyone else came into this country. We taught them how to farm. We taught, we built the, the even the White House, we built that. You know, we, we built this country from ground up uh, because we were already here for thousands of years before anybody else came here. Now they are making our people foreigners in their own land. Foreigners. You are not black. You are not an African American. Your skin is brown. Your Two-year-old child can look at his skin and tell that it is brown, not black. But his adult parents tells him that he's black when he knows different. As he grows up and he hear it over and over and over, then he started to uh, he starts to, to blend in with everyone else, saying the same thing that he's black when he knows different. So. Teach your children the right way. Explain to them how history went and what happened. Information is power. Okay, it also says here, in the wake of Gabriel's rebellion in 1800, T.J. suggested to then-Governor James Monroe that the Virginia General Assembly consider passing a adoption law to remove rather than hang the accused conspirators. The legislature of the 
of the states duly passed a resolution recommending the purchase of land on which to settle offenders and possibly Virginia's entire slave population. So they wanted to get rid of the whole population of free people of color who were indigenous in Virginia to move them out west. Monroe then asked T.J. whether as president he could secure land in the western United States for this purpose. T.J. instead proposed the colony of Sierra Leone which had already been established under the management of a British company. T.J. wrote Ruffus King requesting that he consult with the Sierra Leone Company officers. Henry Thornton informed King that the company's direction opposed admitting blacks from the United States because of their reputation of idleness and unruliness. Idleness and unruliness. <laughs> the colony at Sierra Leone was nearly total collapse when the British government took it over in 1808. T.J. to Monroe, September 20, 1800. Okay, so part of this letter here is what she's uh, reading uh, that they were making plans to take the people from the Americas and trying to secure a ship and uh, assurances from Great Britain. And it says uh, right here, uh, an interest will be made, I expect, to obtain a light protection of insurance from the government of Great Britain. And thus, if all would unite in permitting it to be raised and abide as an altar of benevolence, would it not tend would it not tend to advance the spirit of re reformation in the world and do credit to the nations thus promoting it uh, that the benevolent society now established in England for the purpose of civilizing the Africans uh, was set on foot by Granville Sharp, uh, one of its active members, and he was stimulated there too. By a letter I wrote William uh, D. Uh, Delwyn a considerable time back requesting him to suggest the plan for such a society forming a colony for the purpose of eventually and promoting the civilization of Africans and receiving such for uh, subjects for such a colony from this country, we paying the expense of their conveyance and for six months provisions uh, after being there and then and they then to take on the whole charge thereof which indeed will be much the heaviest part of the burden would they be willing to adopt it which I shall immediately write to know after my return from return home to William Delwyn getting him to apply uh, to his friend General Sharp to know but whether he show my former letter to him as James Pemberton supposed he immediately would and it cherished or produced a similar idea in him General Sharp I cannot say but hearing within a year after of such a society being established for the promotion of civilization in Africa, I did not know, but James Pemberton's idea was verified. At the time, at the same time that I wrote to William uh, Dillwyn, I wrote also to the member of Congress at Washington requesting, that, uh, requesting him to lay it before Thomas Jefferson, then president, but uh, never heard of the result proposed. He had not perhaps seen the expediency of it or mentioned to the president he can tell whether it is new uh, and if disposed to embrace such a plan with a like energy. With Granville Sharp, likely he may be very useful in it. I thought all sudden people, 
I thought all of a sudden people would more easily embrace such a plan than colonizing in Louisiana, at least having been their oppressors, they may be afraid of them as natural enemies. However, it might not be so, but I believe it altogether likely if the people will not bow in mercy and give up voluntarily part of their interest that possibly many of them may pay for such a withholding by the fortitude of all and aroused from the sleep of insensibility as to truest interest by terrible things in righteousness. So they didn't want to put a colony in Louisiana because the the people who were in charge, the oppressors at that time, were afraid that there was going to be an uprising and the people would basically uh, come against them. So you had free people of color in the south, in the east, in the north, because they took them out of Virginia and even up to Massachusetts. They was taking people out of the country, uh, trying to colonize other lands. Where were the Native Americans during those times? We talking about free people of color during these times, and even up to the Jim Crow when they had, you know, you had water fountains that was either uh, people of color or you had white Europeans. There was no Native Americans nowhere in sight, nowhere listed. So you have to keep in mind that the free people of color who lived in these areas were disenfranchised. You had people out west who were nomads living in teepees who was following the buffalo, who basically were conquered very easily because, you know, after they got rid of us, um, by that time, going out west was a wrap. You had black loyalists like the buffalo soldiers who basically paid the way out west so they can take more lands, even from the nomads in that part of the country. Now you have people who claiming that they have been here for thousands of years, but there was no evidence of them being on the east of the Mississippi. You had mestizos who mixed in with our people. You had Europeans, white, who mixed with our people who were listed as mulattoes, who basically uh, claim Native American heritage today, are descendants of these mixed race people. So you have to realize how this history has been flipped upside down and how the mindset of the people today, assuming that they came from another land which was taught to them in school by this, this curriculum that was promoted by the Daughters of the Confederacy, to miseducate our people, and now we are so far gone, you have folks walking around saying black lives matter. What about aborigines lives matter? We are American aborigines, original to this land. You have the OMAX that has proof that our people have been here for thousands of years. You have Finds that they are pulling out of the, the ground showing who the indigenous people are. You can't get around that. The information is there. And I listen to some of these scholars sometime on, online and it's like they skating around the truth. They know, but they won't come out and tell you. You even have movie stars who skate around the truth. They throw a hint here and there but they don't come straight out and tell you. It's like everyone is afraid to say it because it's not popular. But I'm here to tell you, we have always been here and will always be here. And they may have gotten over with this African-American word that, that our people is falling into today. Uh, this word black and thinking that they are black when they are brown. Uh, thinking that they come from another land mass, giving up their they, uh, genetic uh, 
essence to these companies for free. They forgot all about the Tuskegee experiment when they was um, injecting syphilis and all these other diseases into the people as trials to see what they can get away with. Uh, so who knows what they're doing today? You're giving up your DNA to these companies who mean you no good, and then you got all these chemicals in the foods, uh, stuff that they experimenting in these labs to see how it's gonna work on a certain population. You people need to wise up. Stop giving up your uh, DNA to these companies. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you back in time to the Eastern Shore of Virginia. It says right here in the, in the uh, passage of the Ye Kingdom of the Akamax, uh, it is a strange fact that of the host of navigators who eagerly sought for the Northwest Passage to the East as a result of Megillin's voyage, two of the first landed upon Virginia's soil uh, and are, as far as known, the first white men to visit Virginia. The first. About the time Verrazano was cruising along the Atlantic coast in 1524, Lucas Vasquez entered the capes of Virginia in search for the passage. Attached by, attracted by the uh, equitable climate and the fertility of the soil and failing to find a route to Cathy, uh, the Avalon, secured from his king, Charles V, a grant for the Newfoundland, and in 1526 built the town of San Miguel on the banks of the James River, near where Jamestown was founded 81 years later. So this is 1524, no, 1520, yeah, 1524. So he built the town of San Miguel in uh, 1526, uh, and Jamestown was founded 81 years after San Miguel. The attempt of the Spanish to, to find a permanent settlement in Virginia proved abortive. Internal strife and disease wiped out San Miguel. So San Miguel is wiped out because they had strife going on with the people. And a few survivors of who might be called an expedition sailed away from Virginia shores in search of other adventures leaving the task of the colonization of the country to the hardy and enterprise, enterprising sons of Britain. So the Spanish, the Spanish had to uh, tuck tail and run because they couldn't handle it. Too much going on with the strife and stuff with the people that was on the land. And it is a one event in history of San Miguel was ominous uh, of, of the future. The first white inhabitants of Virginia suffered sorely as a result of the insurrection of Negroes whom they brought with them. So now they're saying that the Spanish brought Negroes with them in 1524 to San Miguel, and there was an insurrection going on. The first white inhabitants of Virginia suffered solely as a result of the insurrection of Negro slaves whom they brought with them. 93 years before the Dutch dis, 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 disposed their unfortunate cargo of Negroes at Jamestown. So now the time frame is not making sense because they're saying that the Dutch disposed of Negroes 94 years before Jamestown, but Jamestown was built uh, 81 years after San Miguel. San Miguel is in 1526. So how can they have uh, San Miguel being built in 1526 and Jamestown being 81 years later? So now who's there first? The Dutch. And the Dutch is 93 years before Jamestown. Okay. So now it's a... Uh, Slavery had existed in Virginia soil, destroying the happiness of the first white occupants of the land, uh, impairing their safety and ultimately leading to the destruction of their colony. The Dutch, however, are in no wise 
exonerated of having imposed an awful burden on the Negro upon the English colonies of Virginia by the mere statement of the fact, a fact too often ignored by historians. So if the Dutch is the one that brought them before the Spaniards, and the, uh, the Spaniards built the town of San Miguel in 1526, and they first arrived in 1524. So let's go see... Uh, when did the Dutch arrive? Let's find out when the Dutch, because the Dutch folks been the first. Okay, let's look at the Dutch. What we got on the Dutch here? All right, let's see the Dutch. We're going to find out when did the Dutch arrived in the Virginia colonies. Okay, when did the Dutch explore North America? It said the Dutch connection with North America began in 1609 when Henry Hudson, an English captain in the service of such and such, long were discovered with his ship, uh, Half Moon, the river which now bears his name. Okay, so the Dutch in 1609. So now, if the Dutch was the first and they was there in 1609, and that's when the Dutch first arrived and they brought cargoes of Negroes before the Spanish? Or was that Negroes already there before 1524? Because that's what they're saying. So you see how they are lying to you about who was there first and what the color of the people were? Because they're saying that there was Negroes there. And then they try to say that the Spanish brought them with them. But then they turn around and say, well, the Dutch had left them before that. So the Dutch didn't get there to 1609. So you can see where the story is not making sense. They say, what was the first Dutch settlement? The first Dutch settlement was in 1614. 1614. So now you're looking at something that's totally different. When did the slavery, when did slavery begin in North America? Now they tell you, let me see what they say. When did slavery begin in North America? So they saying slavery began the arrival of the first captives in Jamestown in 1619 is often seen as the beginning of slavery in North America, but the enslaved African arrived in North America as early as the 1500s. Uh, in late 1619, the White, Leon, White Lion, an English privateer commanded by John Jope, sailed into Port Comfort and dropped anchor in James River. So now you're going back to the 1500s. Uh, and they blame that on the Dutch. But as we saw earlier, that the Dutch, that there was already people there before the Dutch arrived there. So now we see that, well, the story that they're telling doesn't make sense. Because we're looking at the actual account of, of what was going on here. You got in 1524, uh, Veracruz saying that he sailed into the Atlantic uh off the case off the coast of, of uh, Virginia and he built a city there a little town uh called San Miguel San, Mi San Miguel off the banks of the James River now Jamestown was not built at that particular time so he's saying that they brought uh negro slaves with them so if we're looking at 1524 or even 1500s it's already people there before Jamestown, they telling you that Jamestown, the slavery started in Jamestown in 1619, but you got the Dutch here saying, okay, well, we had Negroes here already in the 1500s, uh, uh, people that was already on the land. But you also have the, uh, the Jamestown being built 98 years later on, after San Miguel was already destroyed. The Spanish left the area uh, because they couldn't deal with the uh, insurrection that was going on. And so now you got Negroes here. So they keep trying to go back to say, well, there was no Negroes here until we brought them here. But we can well see that the people of the land who had the insurrection were people that was already here. It's like they, they didn't come to a vacant land and there was nobody here at all. So uh, you can see the trickery that they are. Uh, 
trying to portray in history by going back and forth uh, with the years and the dates and stuff like that. And they tell you that there was an insurrection of Negroes who they brought with them. Uh, it's a even is a one event in history of San Miguel was was ominous of the future. The first white inhabitants of Virginia suffered sorely as a result of the insurrection of Negroes whom they brought with them 93 years before the Dutch. So 93 years before the Dutch. Now the Spanish built San Miguel, but they say they brought them with them 93 years before the Dutch. Now it looks like the Dutch came after the Spanish. So if the Dutch came after the Spanish, then the Dutch were there late. The Spanish had to be there first, right? Okay, so now it's looking like the story is flip-flopping. But nonetheless, there was Negroes there already, and that's who they had to fight with, the people of the Eastern Shore, and they lost, and they came back with reinforcements and took over the land. That's it in a nutshell. Okay, so that's going to be the end of my video, and I thank you for watching. Kanike, we're right now. Have a good day.